Hi, Shari. It was great pleasure uh, to have you back in Coimbra, as I told you in the message. Uh, and, of course, you could see, as I told you, that the chemistry of our working together in the 90s came to life again here in Coimbra. And that's why you are going to be part of our Alice project. And uh, as I told you, the, the, the popular university of social movements may be held in Mumbai under your coordination together with me and the other people that are working with me in India. And I'm very glad that, uh, that you got interested in the concepts of sociology of absence and sociology of emergencies. It's very important in my, in my way of thinking and in my epistemology. With the sociology of, of absences, I uh, position myself basically in, a situ in, in an epistemological angle that allows me to make a radical critique of dominant epistemologies, of dominant structural functionalist uh, uh, sociological theories uh, by trying to identify the silences that they create the invisibility that they create, the, the absences that they create. And in fact, we know that even our critical theories, even our tradition of Marxism, produce lots of exclusions. When, for instance, we look at Latin America, there's always my most interesting uh, example, but we could also look at India, how the question, the tribal issue, the question of indigenous people, is dealt with by Marx. In a sense, they are invisible. In, fact, in, in a sense, they don't belong to history because the, 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 the new society will be uh, brought about by the working class and not by indigenous people. Well, you have seen in, in your country and I have seen in Latin America how the, the, the Alivajis, how the, the tribal people, the indigenous people in Latin America have been very uh, active in promoting their struggles, particularly struggles for land, so they were invisible, even in the best theories, I would say, in Marxism. So the sociology of absence is to say that basically what is absent from our side is a problem of our lenses, of the theories and concepts we manipulate to analyze society, because we don't analyze society. We analyze phenomena through scales, through concepts, through theories. And these concepts, scales and theories um, not, not only allow us to see some things, but prevent us from seeing others. And if you have this in mind, you may develop alternative lenses that allow you to identify the, invis the invisible things, the invisible entities, people, struggles, languages, uh, grammars of emancipation. So the sociology of absences is basically a fight against dominant forms of sociology, of theory, of, of science, of epistemologies. For instance, even the knowledge, the popular knowledge, the knowledge developed by the street vendors, by the social movements, that we don't consider really knowledge, we consider them a kind of a raw material for our knowledge. So it is the epistemological visibility of knowledge, of people, and therefore this is the struggle. The sociology of emergencies, on the contrary, is already on the side of those invisibles, on the side of these entities, peoples, knowledges, struggles that have been made invisible because they have been radically excluded in society and therefore they have been discriminated against. They have, in the past, some of them were not even considered human. Uh, women were subhuman, uh, slaves were subhuman. Uh, indigenous people were not human uh, for a long time. So once you identify them, then working with them, we have to amplify whatever they do. That is to say, we have to symbolically look at their struggle, which they tend to be, even when they are identified, they tend to be considered marginal, not important, uh, and not uh, uh, sufficiently powerful to conduct or to lead us into a new society. And the sociology of emergence is to look at what is emerging, what is coming out of these struggles. They may be embryonic, they may be just seeds, but they are telling us something. They are telling that our theories of social emancipation have been very limited, restricted. We have to amplify, we have to uh, enlarge, expand our canon. And in order to do so, we have to look at these struggles with a different eye, a favorable eye. While in sociology of uh, absences, there is a very unfavorable, a, a high of suspicion, 
against uh, the, the, the dominant sociology and dominant theories, here I have a benevolent eye. Look at these struggles, try to help them to be stronger. Make this emergence as, as embryonic as something that is a not yet. Something that is not yet there, is, not, is latent, is a tendency, is, is, is not very explicit in what it, it tries to accomplish, but I can see the seeds of a better society, a more comprehensive, a more inclusive society, a more intercultural society, a just society. And therefore, I pay particular attention to these movements, to their initiatives, and I'm, in a sense, doing a, the sociology of emergencies, amplifying, in symbolic terms, in analytic terms, their value. That is basically the idea, my dear Charit. Then, of course, we have to do that in operational terms, in our research, in our field work, and that's why all the people that are working with me and, of course, uh, our work that will be working together have to develop at the concrete level, even in your struggles, in your work with street vendors, where are the invisibilities that are being created, even within the movement, uh, the, uh, probably. So we have to try to do that and to amplify whatever the silenced people are trying to tell us. It is basically that to hear better, to see more of, and, and to understand more of the society as it tries to transform itself into a better society. Thank you very much, Alex.